Sorry. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, guys. Um, just got off of Paul's uh, stream. I'm trying to be uh, pretty correctly uh, timed. It. I wanted to do it afterwards, but at the same time, I didn't want to uh, be too... Uh, be to uh, uh, trying of my audience for uh, being generous uh, with their time. So I would like to respect that as best as possible. Um, it was a really good stream or a really good space at Paul's. With Paul's, I hope you joined us there. Um, definitely can recommend uh, from what I've read or heard so far that uh, it looks like it's going to be a very interesting th look. Um, and I really want, <laughs> really excited, as I said before, to uh, get my hands upon it and uh, begin to read it. And <laughs> apologies to uh, if we're going to slightly retread over some old, some old portions that we did at the last stream uh, for Milton. Uh, but you know, it's so good, and uh, and quite frankly, the, the nature of poetry means that you gain. Uh, of good poetry, anyway, means that you're going to gain uh, more and more as you reread over it. So it's, I don't think, I don't think uh, we should really be that concerned that uh, we're going to be starting slightly back from the beginning, or not, not to the beginning, but uh, slightly retreading some old, some old home lot places, and uh. Sorry, some old lines. So, I believe we started at 2.40. We're going to start at, mm, I think we'll start at 1, 190, what is it? You, you go back to my Telegram page, uh, the Chronicles of Caraticus Car Jack on Telegram. You should be able to find the, uh, the file for the edition of Milton that we're using. And you'll start at one, line 190, or actually 193, thus Satan talking to his nearest mate. And we'll start there. We'll start there. But before but before we do this, I'll dig into the text. Um, let's see. We got one, one live viewer. Um, before we before we do this, I'd merely like to slightly elaborate on the nature of. Or actually, no, no, no. Well, I'll do that later. Let's dig straight into the text. Sorry if I'm a touch disorganized. Uh, trying to get better at uh, doing the notes for this, but we shall begin at 193. And I'll probably go to ah uh, yes. I'll start 193, and we'll go to line 241. So we're going to go back over this old previous section, and then we will. Uh, I'll give a little bit deeper commentary upon it. Some things from last time that uh were illuminated to me as I listened to it. And and then continue on from there. Uh, okay. Thus Satan, talking to his nearest mate, with head lifted up above the wave, and eyes that sparkled bla a sparkling blazed his other parts besides. Prone on the flood, extended long and large, lay floating many a rude and bulk as huge, as whom fables name of monstrous size, Titanian or Earthborn that warred on Jove, Barrios or Typhon, whom the den by ancient Taurus held, or that sea beast Leviathan, which, God of all his works created, hugest that swimmeth the ocean, him haply slumbering on the Norway foam. The pilot of some small night foundered skiff, deeming some island oft as seamen tell. With fixed anchor in his scaly rind, moors by his side under the lee, while night invests the sea and wished morn delays, so stretched out in huge length 
and the archfiend lay chained on the burning lake, nor ever thence had risen or heaved his head, but that the will and high permission of all ruling heaven left him at large his own dark designs with reiterated crimes he might heap on himself damnation while he sought evil to others and enraged might see how his all his malice served but to bring forth infinite goodness grace and mercy shoon on man by him seduced but on himself treble confusion wrath and vengeance poured <laughs> wrath and vengeance poor I, I lost my spot um oh where is it sorry i got distracted i'll start at 215 heap on himself damnation while he oh no, back to the where, where is the yeah 215 heap on himself damnation while he sought evil to others and enraged might see how his mallet all his malice served but to bring forth infinite goodness grace and mercy shone shown on man by him seduced but on himself treble confusion wrath then and vengeance poured forthright upright he rears off from off the pool his mighty stature and each on each hand the flames driven backward slope their pointing spires and rolled in billows, leaving forth a mo midst a horrid veil. Then, with expanded wings, he steers off his flight, aloft incumbent on the dusky air, that felt unusual, that unfelt unusual weight, till on dry land. He lights as if it were a land that ever burned, with solid as the lake with liquid fire, and such appeared in hue. That was when the force of subterranean wind transports a hill torn from Pelorius or shattered side, or the shattered side of thundering Etna, whose combustible fueled entrails that thence conceiving fire, sublimed with mineral fury, aid the winds and leave a singed bottom, all involved with stench and smoke, oh, with stench and smoke. Such resting found the soul of unblessed feet. Him followed next his mate, both glorifying to have scaped the Stygian flood as gods, and by their own recovered strength, not the sufferance of supernatural power. Okay. That was line 242 through 190 something. Uh, yeah, it was 190. Yeah, 193. So, I th other thing struck me as I reread through this passage um, and reflected upon it more, in particular when you look at how he vividly paints, how vividly he paints what it's kind, what it's like subjectively like to uh, what it's subjectively like to. Uh, To have a hot, to, uh, to breathe hot air, for example. Where was that? Um, just come, uh, using a, you know, the image of a mountain being ripped apart, um, in order to uh, drive that in. I found I, every single time I go through Milton or Shakespeare, when they uh, have to describe these different things. And, there's a very big difference. Like I, I can read Shakespeare pretty well and cleanly. Uh, cold read Shakespeare because Shakespeare is writing for actors to read, whereas uh, Milton you have to wrestle with. And that, that's actually what I was uh wanted to say address before I started reading that or uh reading this to my viewers. Uh, let me pull up. Thank you, loyal live viewer, uh, for still being here. Um, the, the, uh, Milton, you have to genuinely struggle and wrestle with in order to be able to, in order to be able to read him competently and to catch the flow of what he is saying. 
in because that is the nature of his poetry it's part of it is in terms of construction he doesn't really use um periods that much uh but also is by nature of his enjambment even though you want to there, there's a natural uh there's a natural tension that grows in the text or that's present in the text where enjambment prevents it from falling into rhythm more like what you want to with uh with well, shakespeare comparatively speaking when you read his iambic pentameter because uh, you know shakespeare is uh, telling it to an audience where the actors have to project their voices and so you have this these nice little chunks that you can hurl out in you know like lines that will punch and uh that will punch and wait, you know, in a very real sense, it's kind of like a precursor in the case of Shakespeare with uh, like Marvel quippy, quippiness in a certain respect. There is a reason why the quip is a thing. But the problem is, uh, or well, not the problem, but Milton does not have a need for this because Milton ultimately is meant to be read off the page as to yourself that allows you to go back and reread through a line that particularly resonates with you so that that was the uh that was the digression that i wanted to uh i wanted to give as the introduction but i think it's right before we get back and get into the new stuff and so i think it was well suited so starting at 243 is this the region this soil and climb said the lost archangel this the seat that we must for uh, change for heaven this mournful gloom for that celestial light be it so since he who now is sovereign can dispose and bid what shall be on the right farthest on uh, farthest from him is best whom reason hath equaled forth hath made supreme and above his equals farewell happy fields where joy forever dwells hail horrors hail infernal world and thou profoundest hell receive thy new possessor O one who brings a mind not to be changed by place or time the mind is its own place oh yeah we, we touched this I, I forgot to listen to my own stream for the notes but uh it's still such an epic line <laughs> it's still it's still that thing that really sets you off and begins the process of selling you the idea that there is something there's still some, something noble about it in, the, in terms of this uh, satanic stoicism uh um so hail horrors receive thy new possessor a mind not be changed by place or time the mind is its own place and in itself can make a heaven of hell a hell of heaven what matter where if I still be the same, and what I should be all but less than he whom thunder hath made greater? Here at least we shall be free. The Almighty hath not built here for his envy, will but will not drive us hence. Here we may reign secure, and in my choice to reign is worth ambition, though in hell, better to reign in hell than serve in heaven. But wherefore let we then our faithful friends the associates and co-partners of our loss oh i thus astonished on uh, on the oblivious pool and call them not to share with us their part in this unhappy mansion or once more with allied arms to try what may yet um, be yet regained in heaven or what oh, more lost in hell so satan spake and him but yells above so so yeah basically <laughs> satan as i said before gives this dramatic speech uh i don't i i could, probably could dedicate an entire stream analyzing just like the sub characters uh of Sat the character of satan just for this and you know take out all the all the sizzle reels you know the sizzle lines maybe i'll do that later um if you guys are interested please in that please uh, drop that in the comments uh but uh i know i'll get digressed too much if i do that and we'll never get we'll never get done book one uh before 
before say uh, Valentine's Day or something like that. I don't know. Um, so, in, so back to 271. So Satan spake and him Beelzebub thus answered, leader of those armies bright, which but the omnipotent none could have foiled. If once they hear that voice, that our liveliest pledge of hopes and fears and dangers heard so oft in worse extremes and on the perilous edge of battle where it raged in all assaults, their purest, their surest, sorry, their surest signal, they will soon resume new cur courage and revive, though now they lie groveling and, pot and prostrate on yon lake of fire, as we erewhile astounded and amazed, no wonder, fallen in such pernicious height, he scarce had ceased when his superior, when the superior fiend was moving towards the shore, his ponderous shield, ethereal temper, massy and large and round, behind him cast the broad circumference, hung on his shoulders like the moon, whose orb though through optic glass the Tuscan artist views, on evening from the top of Fessol, or in Valderno, to descry new lands. <laughs> uh, to descry, uh, sorry, to descry new lands, rivers, or mountains in her spotty globe. His spear to equal which the tallest pine hewn of Nor on Norwegian hills, to be the mast of some great admiral, were but a wand. And he walked with a support with to support uneasy steps over the burning marl to not like those steps on heaven azure azure yes, on heaven's azure and torrid and the torrid climb smote on him sore besides vaulted with fire mathless he so endured on the be until on the beach of that inflamed sea he stood and called his legions angel forms forms who lay entranced thick as autumnal leaves oh i really word nerd moment uh autumnal that right there line what is it three one two three oh two uh i really love the feel of that word <laughs> you know that it it rings well autumnal uh leaves it it feels so alien to what we typically think of as such a cozy season it's almost like it's like a you know a clinical poet almost i don't know this is the cellador effect in action right now but uh back back to it starting at th line 300 on that inflamed sea he stood and called his legions angels forms uh, who lay entranced thick as autumnal leaves that strew oh, the brooks in valbrosa where where in the Etrurian shades, high over, overarched, embower or scattered <laughs> sedge, afloat, when the fierce winds Orion armed hath vexed the Red Sea coast, whose waves overthrew Bucyrus and his Memphian cavalry, while with perfidious hatred they pursued the sojourners of Goshen, who beheld from the safe shore, the uh, floating carcasses and broken chariot wheels, so thick bestrown obje object and lost lay these, covering the flood under amazement of their hideous change. He called so loud that all the hollow deep of hell resounded. Princes, potentates, warriors, and the flower of heaven, once yours, now lost, in such astonishment as this can seize. Eternal spirits, and have ye chosen this place? Wait, what? Uh, he called so loud that all that resounded. Oh, oh sorry. I, I myself got so caught up in the, the this. Actually, this is probably a good line to stop. Uh, line three fourteen is where we'll stop. He called so loud in all the hollow deep. Um, page fifty six on this particular PDF, if you're using it, or page twenty inside of it. Um, inside the document this is a milton gives us this incredible image of satan coming ashore or us striding ashore like it and it's such a great contrast with the supremely kind of like 
human verisimilitude of how he portrays the psychology of Satan in particular. Like you go, you go back to that op famous openly soliloquy that where he portrays this kind of like noble stoicism uh, and resentment and defiance against, uh, against God. But in contrast with, oh, hello. Hey, Jacob. Hey, forbidden anthropologist. <laughs> I, I, I need to, I need to find my uh, paperback of Milton so I can read this and keep track of the comments. Um, so, so anyway, the contrast in between Milton and let me let me get this so it's uh yeah this okay this is better yeah okay I get I I don't know why I didn't think of this one solution for uh before but anyway so back to where is it um right when, when and so after Beelzebub gets interrupted when. When well, Satan goes in line 280, was it 283, 83, um, he starts moving forward and he starts with this very, it's, it's called, <laughs> it's called a uh, Miltonian simile. And I forget why it's called a Miltonian sim huh, simile. Let me quickly see if I can find the, the quick definition. This is, this is top quality scholarship here, folks. Milton. Miltonian simile, or Miltonic uh, simile. Ah, yes. So yeah, Miltonic similes are, uh, no, come on. There it is. So, yeah, his use of uh, epic simile, where he uses essentially these long drawn out analogies to describe something. Like, for example, when he describe begins to describe his, oh, when he begins to describe his uh, shield, for example, his ponderous shield, ethereal temper, massy or solid weighty. Uh, large and round, behind him cast the broad circumference, hung on his shoulders like the moon, whose orb through the optic glass of the Tuscan artist views. Referencing, you know, uh, recently uh, popularized, not invented, it was actually around for a while, but popularized, uh, you know, technology of the tusk of the telescope in the e at evening from atop the Frisole, or in Orlando, um, Valdarno to describe new land, describe new lands, or describe new lands, uh, rivers or mountains in her spotty globe. His spear, only e to equal which the tallest pine hewn on Norwegian hills to be the mast of some great admiral, were but a wand. Like that's like he's describing like this absolute, you know, giant, this this being, you know, and in the classical sense, this great being, not great as in the good, but great as in the great and the good. Like this, this guy, when he's, when he's decrying heaven, like he's, Satan, Milton helps build us up a character that may respect as inhuman and superhuman as he gives us, and gives him a supremely human psychology. Um, so that, and then you get him moved down where he begins to describe <laughs> as he's calling his legions toward him. You know, describing them as in these very, very vivid descriptions of just how many things there are. Like this, you know, where he compares them to, you know, the broken chariots, the, the broken cavalry and chariots of the Dead Sea. Um, like it's absolutely uh broken chariot wheel so thick bestrown object and lost lays covering the flood. Like Yeah, man. Absolutely uh absolutely uh just epic. Like in the in the proper sense of the word. Like this is this is what I why I partially rebel against the people that insist that you must start like that wanted to like define it as like oh you have to 
an epic poem is where it's a long narrative poem uh, where you have to start in media res and you have typically have like an invocation to the gods. Uh, and I think a lot of those academic definitions, as I mentioned in the last stream, are just they miss this this feeling of epicness, like in the modern, <laughs> in the truly modern sense, when you read this and you're just like, oh man, like th this is him building up like Satan is the man among this swarm, this horde of beings, and he is the greatest among them, where his spear is so big, you know, <laughs> his spear is so big that it's the largest things that we man actually, men in his day actually dealt with. And it's like a wand, you know? It's like a, a swatting stick. So it's, yeah, it, at this rate, we're not going to make it through the entire thing. Uh, my legs are already giving out, beginning to give out uh, partially. So I'll probably, I'll have to cut this at an hour, but hopefully I can get, at this rate, we can get to the almost the very end and then last last video the next video will be the last video on this so starting at 314 he called so loud that all the hollow deep of hell resounded princes potentates and warriors resounded princes potentates warriors the flower of heaven once yours now lost if such astonishment as this can seize eternal spirits or have ye chosen this place after the toil of battle to repose your wearied virtue or for the ease you find to slumber here as in the veils of heaven as in the veils of heaven or in this abject posture have ye sworn to adore the conqueror who now beholds cherub and seraph rowling, uh, rowling in the flood with scattered arms and ensigns, till anon his swift pursuers from the heaven's gate discern the advantage and descending tread us, uh, tread us down the drooping, or with linked thunderbolts transfix us to the bottom of this gulf. Awake, arise, or be forever fallen. So here he's, this is a rallying cry. This is where he, where he essentially says, are you going to be beaten? Are you going to be forever put down by the man? <laughs> by, they heard. And so we'll continue on 331. Uh, they heard and were abashed and <laughs> up they sprung upon the wing as warm when men want to watch on duty sleeping found by the sleeping found by whom they dread roused arouse and bestir themselves ere well awake nor did they not perceive the evil plight in which they were or the fierce pains did uh, not feel yet their general voice general's voice they soon obeyed innumerable as when the, uh, the potent rod of aram's son in egypt Egypt's evil day waved round the coast, up called a pitchy cloud of locust, warping on the eastern wind, that oar of the realm of impious pharaoh hung like night and darkened the land of the Nile. So numberless were those bad angels seen, <laughs> hovering on the wing uh, under the cope of hell, twixt upper nether and surrounding fires, Till, as in um, given, as a uh, signal given, um, the uplifted spear of their great sultan, waving the, uh, to direct their course, an even balance, they uh, down the light, down they light on the fire brimstone and fill all the plain, a multitude, like with the populous north, north port. Ah. Okay, I thought there was gonna be a. A uh, stopping spot, a uh, natural stopping spot. I gotta be, be better. Gotta uh, take better notes <laughs> on uh, written notes anyway for the outline. We'll stop at 350 for this uh, to note. To note because there's something that's very interesting there, where we have this stereotype about the great authors that they're always going to use like the most these elegant turns of phrases every single time, particularly for like. 
uh, particularly for small works, because at the very least with a small work, you can be concentrated and concentrate a lot of originality into a small spot. But as you can see in, uh, in 340, uh, uh, 344, so numberless were those bad angels seen, seen. Like it, it's this, this is wonderfully mundane turn of phrase in a way to contrast with, you know, some more uh, epic turns of phrases that he might use uh, that we just forget that it's language like every uh, day language that Milton is using all the while he is, he did actually invent quite a number of uh, original words as far as we can tell. Uh, of all the great authors of the English language, uh, it, is, it has been shown that uh, Milton, at least as far as we can tell, has invented the most uh, per capita. So, just a brief little side note there. Uh, okay, let me pull this back up. So, starting at 350, on the firm brimstone and fill all the plain, a multitude like which the populous north poured never from her frozen loins to pass Rhine or da or the Danaw, Rhine or Danube, when her ba I believe, um, when her barbarous sons came from like a deluge from the south and spread from beneath Gibraltar or the into the Libyan sands, forthwith from every squadron and each band, the heads and leaders, thither hast where stood their great commander, godlike shapes and forms, excelling human princely dignities and powers that er that erst in heaven in heaven sat throne in heaven sat on thrones the though of their normal names in heavenly records now by the no memorial blotted out and raised by their rebellion from the books from the books of life nor had they yet among the sons of eve got them new names till wandering the oar over the earth. Though through God, high suffering for the trial of man, by falsities and lies the greatest part of mankind, they corrupted, sorry. Uh, um, Starting back at the top from 365, sorry. <sighs> got them new names till wandering Till wandering o'er the earth or over the earth, through God's high sufferance for the trial of man, by falsities and lies, the greatest part of mankind they corrupted to forsake God their Creator and the invisible glory of Him that made them, to transform oft the image of a brute adorned with gay religions of full of pomp and gold, and devils to adorn and to adore for deities, when then. Then they were known by, to men by various names and various idols through the heathen world. Say, say, muse, their names then be known. Who first, who last, roused from their slumber on that fiery couch at their great emperor's call, as next in worth came singly where he stood on the bare strand, while the promiscuous crowd, who stood, oh, yet, while the promiscuous crowd, yet, oh, Stood yet aloof, the chief where the chief were those who the pit, who from the pit of hell, roaming to seek their prey on earth, and durst fix their seats long after uh, next the seat of God, their altars by his altar, God calls God, God's adored among the nations round, and durst abide Jehovah thundering out of Sion, groaned between the cherubim, yea, often placed, often placed within his sanctuary, it, it itself their shrines, abominations with cursed things, his holy rites and solemn feasts profaned, with their, and with their darkness durst affront his light. First, Moloch, Horrid king besmeared with blood of human sacrifice, and parents' tears, the, though for the nose of drums and timbrels allowed their children's cries unheard, uh, unheard, that passed through the fire to his grim idol. So here's, okay, here's kind of like an organic stopping point. So, so you see basically this 
entire section right here that we just went over. It's very long. Um, basically, the, the setup for you see a setup for these fallen angels who are being presented once again uh, for whatever for the various deities. Because in the book two, um, there's an entire discussion about um, you know how how will we subvert God? How will we uh, get back at him? There's various uh, strategies and plans presented with Satan, very obviously, because he is the top guy, uh, coming up with the uh, the strategy to best God and get back at him, because there is a a prophecy of these of a new world to be created with new creatures, and so here we begin to get introduced to introduced to um, Milton's Milton's uh, biblical biblically informed view of all these religions you'll you'll see some uh cringe <laughs> cringe youtubers that really don't understand uh getting interpreting a work from the perspective and worldview of an author where they're just like <laughs> where they'll be like oh no why aren't these why are these pagan deities like heck and marvel characters uh no milton is a at least in this respect a uh, biblical christian in terms of his portrayal of these as demons uh, though Michael Heiser may claim that they're angels, either way, they're they are not actually divine things. They are just merely preternatural uh, beings. So anyway, back to back to uh, three ninety six line three ninety six uh, to him to his grim idol, him the Ammonite worshipped in Rabbah, and his her watery plain. Argob and in Basan to the stream of utmost Arnon. Nor content with such audacious neighborhood, the wisest heart of Solomon he led by fraud to build his temple right against the temple of God on that opprobrious hill, and made in his grove the pleasant valley of Himnon, Tophet thence, and black Gehenna called the type of hell. Oh, that. I don't, I missed that in the past reading. That is very interesting. So he, right here, like right here in line 409, Gehenna is a very important word uh, in case you missed uh, <laughs> missed a little bit of an introduction into hell. You may think that all of hell is the same, that what the demons right now are in is hell. What technically the demons are in is called Hades in, a set, in this case. Or uh, roughly speaking, or actually, yeah, I believe that would be what it is, um, because that is what typically that is typically what it, that's what the actual uh, place people go to. There's like in biblical uh, biblical Hebraic the biblical Hebraic worldview. If you look at, for example, the uh, uh, the story of Lazarus, where you know Lazarus, you know this guy dies, poor man dies and the rich man that didn't heed him also is in uh he can see him where Lazarus is in the bosom of Abraham and one of the guy that the rich man that passed him by is like Lazarus please give me some water that is hot days it's like this two compartment you know place of holding and it's very distinctly different from the lake of fire in Genesis where uh death disease you know the four horse and all that you know, go to uh, go to be tortured forever, uh, or go to you know go to hell forever. That is called Gehenna. It's very different than Hades, um, and Gehenna uh, draws, and this is a biblical reference that uh, that he's making. Gehenna was a place where, particularly outside of Jerusalem, and you see where he says it right here, the type of hell. And I believe, let's see, did, huh? That's interesting that. Under the up. So yeah, the groves. So Gehenna later on was basically a continually burning trash heap. And so basically makes this connection to the particular Canaanite deity and that later Gehenna, which became the image and byword essentially for this idea of ultimate destruction. So that's a very interesting uh, little bit of a uh, connection there. Um, next, um, uh, starting at 4.06, Next, Chemos, the obscene dread of Moab's sons, 
from Aror to Nebo in the wild southmost southmost Abrarium in Hebson, in Horanium, Seon's realm beyond, the flowery dale of Simba, Simba clad with vines, and yell to, yell, yell to <laughs> Asflik Pool, Peor, his other name, then enticed Israel and Sittim on their march from the Nile to do him wanton rites, which cost them woe. Yet, Thence his lustful orgies he enlarged, even to that, even to that hill of scandal by the grove of Moloch, of Moloch homicide, lust hard by hate, to hate, or uh, by hate. Uh, shoot. Uh, till good Josiah drove them thence to hell. With all these came they, who from the bordering flood of old Euphrates to the home brook that parts Egypt from Syrian ground had general names of Bala, Balium and Asroth, those male, these feminine, the, those male, these feminine. For spirits, when they please, can either sex assume or both so soft and uncompounded their essence pure. Oh, nor... Nor tid or mangled with joint or limb, nor tied nor mangled with joint or limb, nor founded on the brittle strength of bones like cumbrous flesh, but in what shape they choose, dilated or condensed, bright or obscure, can execute their airy purposes and, wor and works of love or enmity fulfill. For those the race of Israel oft forsook their living strength, and unfrequented left his righteous altar, bowing lowly down to bestial gods. For their heads sunk as low, bowed down in battle, sunk before the spear of despicable foes. With these in troop came Astoreth, whom the Phoenicians called Asarte, queen of heaven with crest, crescent horns, to, to whose bright image nightly by the moon Sidonian virgins paid their vows and songs. In Sion, also not unsung, where stood, where stood her temple on the offense, offensive mountain built by that uxorious king, whose heart, though large, beguiled by fair idolatrous, fell to idols foul. Okay, this is a, another good spot to stop because right here we get to an aspect that has been touched upon about the worldview of uh about the worldview of Milton in that people speculate that he had a had a very peculiar view about things because you know he's in, he's interjecting this particular view about the nature of angels and how and how that he is uh see, I think we can make it yeah we can make it to 5 let me just quickly check ahead. Okay, so back to this. So, in particular, he believes that the angels are able to take all these different forms and whatnot. And this is addressed later, actually. Let's see. Oh, shoot, I lost my spot while I was trying to look ahead. Um, Gemos. Yep, there it is. Okay. okay. Oh, and lines 420 and on, it begins to talk about, or 425 and on, it starts talking about how the spirits can take either sex. Um, and and later on, when the, Adam t asks Eve about about the the angels about this question, he basically says, "Yeah, we we just basically kind of like you know phase shift together, <laughs> and it's supposed to be more joyous than a uh, than regular human sex." It appears that Milton, and Milton has this view that um, essentially, as you become more righteous, that in a certain sense you become more refined and you have this ethereal quality as you continually grow. You'll see this later, later on. Um, and so he, and it comes out in how he describes, you know, the very, uh, you know, human. 
uh, the human body is like brittle bone and whatnot, even though, as we all know, uh, bone is actually very, very elastic, actually, uh, so much so that we, we try to copy it. Um, so back to, and so we also begin to get into the descri uh, description of, you know, this queen of lust, um, the bestial gods of uh, Asarte and queen of heaven with crescent horns. Um, and so we go back to line uh, 446, to idols foul, Thamos, or Thamuz came next behind, whose annual wound in, wound in Lebanon allured the Syrian, uh, Syrian damsels to l lament his fate, in armorous deities of all of all a summer's day, while smooth Adonis from his native rock ran purple to the sea, supposed with blood of Thamos' yearly wound. A love tale infected Sion's daughters with like heat, <laughs> uh, whose wanted passions in the sacred porch Ezekiel saw. When by the visions led his eye surveyed, surveyed the dark idolatries of alienated Judah. Next one came one who mourned him, uh, who, who mourned him in earth. Who mourned in earnest when the captive ark maimed his brute image, head and hands lopped off in his own temple on the Gunsel edge or Grunsel edge, where he fell flat and shamed his worshippers, Dagon by his name. I was wondering, Chad, if you who who else noticed this? I was like, I rem I, I remember when I read this for the first time, and it could just. You just almost want to like mine your own mind for uh for, oh, to see if you can guess who it is. Or he's referencing, you know, this very uh very visceral, uh memorable, you know, Sunday school story in my case, of you know, this this sea monster as he calls it, upward man, downward fish, yet had his own temple high reared in Azotus, dreaded through the coast of Palestine in Gath and Ascalon and Acarion and Gaza's for frontier bounds him followed and so where he describes like this and in this case he's saying that dagon's description is fundamentally correct um or uh, in some respect that even before the world was created this how this is how the form this demon decided to portray himself of this uh, and assume this form in some respect of you know this this bestial humanoid uh creature oh uh, back to this um where was that? Um, uh, for well, actually, start at uh, 465 of of Palestine and in Gath and uh, Ascalon and Acharon and Gaza's frontier bounds. Him followed Rimon, whose delightful seat was fair Damascus, and the, on the fertile banks of Abana and far, 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 loosed streams. He also, against the house of God, was bold. A leper once he lost and gained a king, as has his sotish conqueror, whom he drew God's altar to disparage and displace. Um, for home one of Syrian mode, whereon to burn. Oh, I only got ten minutes left. <laughs> Gonna try to make it to at least five hundred. A uh, force one of Syrian mode, whereon to burn his odious oft rings and adore the gods. Whom he had vanquished. After these appeared a crew under the names of old renown: Osiris, Isis, Horus, the and the Earth Train, and their train with monstrous shapes and sorceries abused. Menatic Egypt and her priests, priests to seek their wandering gods disguised in brutish forms rather than human. Or did Israel escape the infection when their um, borrowed gold composed? The calf in on well, the calf in Oreb, and the rebel king doubled that sin in Bethel and in Dan. Um, he's ref. You know, it's very interesting how he how he weaves in almost seamlessly. You know, he weaves in like this. It's almost like as I read this, I'm still almost struck once again as like the parallel in many respects. Like, um, what is it? Um. Oh, what is it? You're almost struck by like the reverse it, it, of a. Uh, it's reminiscent of a uh, Silence of the Lambs. You know when you have that cinematic scene where 
the agent the agent i forget what's her name is like going in and seeing progressively crazier people and all that stuff and in a way by by the very fact that the existence of this book while satan himself hasn't been introduced in terms of other than rebelling against god um you know he's laying out the rap sheet essentially of all these other <laughs> deities um well he's oh, the entire book itself is like this recursive uh the entire poem itself is this recursive uh rap sheet itself of the greatest of fiend of them all you know satan um and so that that's an interesting uh, little connection there that just crossed my mind um so and here he's referencing obviously the uh the golden calf uh that Aaron made and the rebel king doubled that sin in Bethel and Dan. I believe that's referencing uh I don't rebel king. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, Jero. Yeah, that's who it was. So yeah, it was uh Sol one of Solomon's sons that he's referencing there. Uh Bethel and Dan likening his maker to the grazed ox, Jehovah, who in one night when he passed from Egypt marching, equaled put the lotion in the basket. Uh, <laughs> uh, equaled with one stroke both her firstborn and her, all her bleating gods. Belial came last. Then whom a spirit more lewd fell not from heaven or more gross to love vice it for itself, to him no temple stood or altar smoked yet. Who more oft than he in temples and at altars when the priest turns atheist as did Eli's son, who filled with lust and violence the house of God in courts and palaces. He, oh, sorry, with lust and violence the house of God. In courts and palaces he also reigns in luxurious cities where the nose of riots ascends, the noise of riot, riots ascend. Riots means debauchery here. Uh, ascend above their loftiest towers in injury and outrage. And when night darkens the streets, then wander forth the sons of Belial, flown with insolence and wine. It witness the streets of Sodom that night in Gibeah, when the hospitable door exposed a matron to avoid worse rape. These were the prime in order and in might. The rest were long to tell, and though far renowned, Though, whom, though far renowned, the Ionian gods of Javan's issue held, go issue held gods, yet confessed later than heaven and earth their boasted parents, Titan, heaven's firstborn, with his enormous brood and birthright sized, uh, seized by younger Saturn from the mightier Jove. Uh, Jove, his own, and Rhea's son, like a uh, measure found. So Jove, usurping, reigned. These first in Crete and Ida known, thence on the snowy top of cold Olympus ruled the middle air, their highest heaven, or on the Delphinian cliff, or in D huh, Dodona, and through the, all the bounds of Doric land, or who with Saturn old led over Aridia to the Hesperian fields, and or the, or the Celtic roamed the utmost isles. All of these and more came flocking, but with looks downcast and damp, yet such wherein appeared obscured some obscure some glimpse of joy to have found their chief, not in despair, to have found themselves not lost, in loss itself, which which on his countenance cast like like doubtful hue, but he his wonted pride, soon recollecting with high words that bore semblance of worth, not substance, gently erased their fainting courage and dispelled their fears. Then straight commands that at the warlike sounds, and the sound of trumpets loud and clarions be upreared, his mighty standard, the proud honor claimed, as a, as, as at his right, as his right, a cherub tall, who forthwith with glittering staff unfurled the imperial ensign, which full high advanced, shone like a meteor, 
streaming unto the wind, with gems and golden luster, rich and blazed, seraphic arms and trophies all the while, sonorous metal, or metal, blowing the martial sounds, metal mean trumpets, um, at which the universal hosts upsent a shout that tore hell concave and beyond, frightened, frightened the hell reign of chaos and old night. All in a moment, through the gloom, were seen ten thousand banners rise into the air with orient colors waving, and with them rose a huge horse of spears, and thronging helms appeared, and serried shields in thick array of unmeasurable death. Anon, they move in perfect phalanx to the Dorian mood of flutes and soft recorders, such a raise to the, such as raise to the height, to height of noblest temper, heroes old arming to battle. And instead of rage, deliberate valor breathed and firm unmoved, with dread of <laughs> dread of death to fight or foul retreat, nor wanting to power or to, to mitigate and swage with solemn touches, troubled thoughts and chase anguish and doubt and fear and sorrow pain and pain. <laughs> oh man, that is. Look at that line right there. Okay, <laughs> sorry, I had to. Sorry to break the flow, but. What's that? Five, five fifty-eight. Anguish and doubt and fear and sorrow and pain like that, and, and chase like this, this is a run-on sentence that it's it all builds up to this uh, pain from mortal and or immortal minds. Thus they breathing united with fixed thought moved it on in in silence to soft pipes they char that charmed their painful steps over the burnt soil and now advanced in view they stand a horrid front of dreadful length and dazzling arms and skies of warriors old and with order spear with ordered spear and shield awaiting what command their mighty chief had to impose he through the armed files darts his experienced eyes and soon traverses the whole home battalion views their order due their facades and statures uh, well, stature as of gods their number last he sums and now his heart descends with pride, and hardening in his strength, glories for which, for never since created man met such an embodied force as named with these could merit more than that that small infantry warred on by the cranes through all through all the giant brood of Flegra with the heroic race were joined that fought at Thebes, Thebes, and Ilium on each side mixed with auxiliar gods. Auxiliary gods or allied gods, and what resounds in fable or romance of other sun, begirt and the British Amoric knights, and what, and all who since baptized or infidel joust, jousted in aspirant and multiband. Ah, let's see. Okay, we're gonna. There's a very long, I'm, I'm not going to be able to make it through all this. Uh, I'm just going to put a pin in it that we're going to start at 557. We're probably going to, maybe, maybe we'll start a bit, maybe at 555. Yeah, maybe, maybe there uh, for the next time. But I'm going to comment on how he set up this entire comparison. Like this is a very deliberate comparison um, because of the two great epic well, three and even um, three of the you know the great epic poems that that he would be comparing that Milton would be comparing himself to primarily, and he makes this very deliberate comparison at the very beginning. Um, and I'd like to thank all of you who stuck stuck through with me to the uh, despite despite this um, me being kind of green and all this, but. Uh, to get back to this, this comparison is very deliberate when he makes this entire list uh, from, was it, lines, starting at lines 575 and uh, before with his analogy or his image of all these, you know, phalanxed uh, demons. It's a very deliberate uh, comparison to the ancient epics. Uh, and he highlights this by saying, like, hey, uh, th these were even greater than the armies that clashed because they were the very gods that allied with them. Um, and so he begins his comparison to it, uh, to all the various epics that he also knew about. So romance of Uther's son, 
Um, it, oh, Charlemagne with his peerage fell and such. And so, all in all, he's making this, in the very opening scene like this, he's telling the audience what he already told them, beginning didactically. But by painting this great, this enormous picture uh, for us with relatively speaking few lines, like it's only 500 lines, 10 average word has like say three syllables, there's 10 syllables, so let's say six words a line. That's six times, six times 500 times, uh, was it six times, uh, why am I blanking so hard? 3,000 words? You know, he paints, he goes from, he goes from, oh shoot, we already have like some main, epic main, an epic main character here that's extraordinarily relatable in terms of this stoic defiance. And at the same time, he's also been able to paint how horrible it is to be in hell <laughs> and how he's got this cast of characters that he's got to like show up because all these characters have done are these legendary figures from the past that have subverted mankind and therefore we're going to we're dealing with the very subverter of mankind because where where more can you go than than the subverter of the father of nations compared to the nations that they have subverted um and on top of all of it even though he doesn't really he does have battle scenes like there is a battle scene it's really awesome uh, it's a three-day you know war in heaven and whatnot a lot of interesting stuff i may try to get someone on because there is a lot of there's an interesting deeper conversation because the fact is that satan uses technology uh for it he even subverts the very thing because he's saying that this, we already have this great battle we have the gods that are these uh you know these awesome characters that stand over and ally with the epics of old but i'm going to one up you and it's not even going to be about a battle uh primarily of uh at least of the physical kind it's going to be the ultimate spiritual struggle where satan subverts the father of us all um any uh any of my viewers who are still here uh do you have any questions or anything like that um I'll give you, um, I'll, I'll uh, continue talking for a little bit. And if there's no more questions, I'd like to thank you for uh, for coming. But uh, one other thing that that popped up as well when he was describing it, when he was t uh, describing the, uh, where was it? All the way back here. When he was describing how, uh, where is it? It's interesting how, at the very end, when he's describing, uh, what is it, the sons of Belial, how they themselves don't have any formal style of worship. Yet, at the very same time, I think that Milton does a little bit of subverting of the satanic hierarchy, uh, you know, the devilish hierarchy itself, because even though he's the last to come out, in a very real sense, he is... In a very real sense, he is, uh, you know, the most subversive of them all because there is no, whereas there could be good kings that do kick out, you know, the places of the high places of worship, chop down the Asterisk poles and whatnot, um, and destroy the Moloch's, uh, the Moloch statues. Uh, thank you, Jacob J. Uh, Belial is always going to be there that, that, because fundamentally Belial is just taking you know, the quotidian things that we all enjoy that we can't really get rid of. And while we can get rid of wine, uh, <laughs> it still doesn't change the fact that wine is a good thing that God has created. Um, has created. And likewise with things like, you know, sexual pleasure and whatnot. Um, we're just always going to have those things as old as the hills. And there's no, there's nothing formal for us to grasp upon and cast out. Um so anyway, with that, with that reflection on um, the nature and how we ultimately the uh, the heart is an idol making factory, to quote uh, John Calvin or paraphrase John Calvin, uh, I'd like to thank all of you once again for uh, coming, and uh, 
Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you for your kind comments and sticking through with this for me, um, or with me. And uh, and uh, I bid you all a, a good night and uh, go to church. Enjoy the Lord's Day, and uh, I hope it is restful.